Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Auto Transport Intel, the car shipping business channel. It is Wednesday. It is noon central time. That means it is time for DOT compliance, where we talk about all things DOT. We got Brian Riker to answer questions live. So you're lucky if you're here. It's 30 minutes of live chat, Q&A, get your questions answered. What you want to do is go ahead. Please leave a like. I do appreciate it. And then you can, you see below the video, you see that share button. Click share, click copy, grab that YouTube link, text it, email it, share it on social media. You know what to do. Let somebody know. You know, you probably know somebody either headed to a scale, just left a scale, or they're going to hit a scale tomorrow and they don't realize what's about to happen. Help them out. Do them a favor. Be their best friend and put them in touch with Brian live. You can ask questions, and let's say you're growing a business, go to autotransportintel.com, click on sign up, become an ATI insider. We want to help you. We want to talk about things. And go ahead and jump in the live chat. Thank you so much. We've got two bears in here, Devin at Victory Lab Transport. And so we're going uh, to start to uh, we're gonna get into those questions in a minute. But before we do, let's go ahead and jump in. Let's bring in Brian. Brian, can you see me and hear me okay? Yes, I can. Good afternoon, Jay. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, nice rainy day here in Mont Eagle, Tennessee. See, and it's funny because I look out the window, I can't tell it's raining. It looks like <laughs> a decent sunny day. Uh huh. Nope, it's currently raining and overcast. Well, Brian, you make a rainy day sunny. Again. <laughs> Just don't start singing, You Are My Sunshine. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Did you hear that live chat? Nobody starts singing. Um. Uh, okay, Brian. Well, I'll tell you what. We know that. Uh, let's do this. We've got to let's set the stage. Um. We. Number one. We bet you can't stump your DOT guy. There's David, and he's in the live chat, and he's also on a stump. Okay. <laughs> David is awesome. He <laughs> is very loyal. <laughs> and he has, has good questions all the time. I love this meme. Thank you, David, so much. It, wore, it came out so well. This is a great one. Well, we got a car hauler in the background. We have him in his safety shirt. What more can we ask for? It has everything. Um, all right. And we also like to cover how we doing. You know, actually, somebody referenced how we doing. It's already a thing. <laughs> how we doing <laughs> wow i know right so how we doing is all about proper weight load distribution on the trailer because we know that there's a lot of fun and games happening on social media with you know the larger transport trailers versus wedgies so we want to help how we doing is our attempt my attempt I made how we doing, so I, I, I don't want to speak for you. Do you. Are we doing, how are we doing? We're doing well, and, and really, I don't want to come across anti-wedge or pro-super trucker. There's good and bad in both sides, and I've said it before. There's a butt for everybody in this seat. Or Yeah, that, wow, that came out. Take two. Where's the clapboard? Right, okay, Here's... here we go. <laughs> Auto Transport Intel, DOT compliance, take two. There, there, there's a place for every butt in this industry. Some of us have bigger trucks. I'm driving a nine car Western start today. This Western start. <laughs> wow. I cannot speak. <laughs> but no, serious, take three. <laughs> seriously. No, take three. That's an awful trailer. No, seriously. <laughs> we're not anti wedge. I am not anti wedge. I am probably a strong proponent of diversity in the industry. That said, this Ram with that six car. Right? That scares the crap How are out we of doing? me. doing? Whoa. All he's missing is an over the cab head rack, and then his overhang would be legal too. Might, might as well put the seventh car on there. Yeah, that, Right, but if so, if he puts a luggage rack, he doesn't even have to put anything on it, according to right. No, just have the rack. <laughs> and he's a car hauler, by yes. law. Well, I yes. would love to see this guy pull up to the Missouri scale with a luggage rack on the truck. That would be incredible. 
Yeah. Now, now I can only speculate what he weighs there, but he is close, if not over, his designed gross combined weight of the power unit in the trailer. That rear axle is screaming. It's got to be real close, if not a couple thousand pounds over rear axle weight rating, maybe tire rating. Uh, I give him credit for working. I give him credit for working hard. He's hustling right there. But that I didn't like putting that type of load on my Miller seven car trailer, pulling it with my single axle tractor. And there were many days I was cutting it close at 20,000 pounds on my single rear axle, which is perfectly legal in every state. And sometimes I was thankful I ran upstate New York more than anywhere else because I was pushing 21, 22,000 and New York allows 22, four on a single axle. Uh, so yeah, six units on that rig. That's pretty heavy. It really is. I'm actually, I'm stunned by it. I mean, I, and this is not a judgment call on work. This has nothing to do with it. But it does, it scares, that, that, that picture scares it, me, man. If I had my DOT enforcement hat on, that would be the truck I would conduct the random traffic stop on. And I would, all I would have to say is it's squatting. And it appears to be overweight. And that's enough justification. There's a readily apparent violation, weight violation, that he could flag him down and scale him. And perhaps he is legal. Perhaps he's right on the edge. And right on the edge is still legal. Do you think uh, that he's said, legal? I mean, do you think? I, I don't. I really don't know. We're, we're looking... Uh, the numbers have been bounced around on this picture for a couple of weeks. This isn't a new picture. Right. I don't and, remember where this came from. Yeah. yeah but I, I'm, really I'm, I'm thinking that he is probably close to 40, 42,000 combined weight, gross weight on the whole rig right there. And probably over on his rear axle. Uh I don't, I don't want to start speculating yeah. numbers, but this right. one just looks bad. It's and wild. even if it's legal... I teach my clients that appearance is important. The DOT officer has a second to make a decision on whether he wants to inspect you or not. You've heard probably old time truckers have probably heard California's picky about stuff on your dashboard. Well, this right here in a state that's uh, already targeting smaller trucks, this right here says, please weigh me and inspect me. Even if he's perfectly legal, it says weigh me and inspect me. And again, I have been one to say that just because it's compliant, just because it's legal, does not always mean it's safe either. Well, and then we can go to, I hope he's a good driver, and I hope he's not doing like the Rocky Mountains. Oh, yes. The right truck in the right part of the country is very important as well. And, and again, I know nothing about this guy. I'm not passing judgment. Uh, give him a lot of credit. He's got a lot of money invested in that rig. A few dollars more, he could put a bigger truck in front of it and, hard. Yeah. and not work as hard, not work his truck as hard either. So, well, And he is. He's ready for a semi, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's built a business to the point where he's ready to step it up to the next size truck and yeah. and get a seven car, uh, single axle, class seven, or even a tandem axle, class eight tractor, or even step up to a Stinger if he has enough work for it. But if he can fill that trailer readily or regularly, he's definitely ready for the next size up tractor trailer combination. Well, and and but and just technically, let's say he loves the trailer. He could he could get a new a power unit, right? Or you oh, yeah. I mean, right? He could just get a semi or an M two or something, right? Exactly. Step up to the next size power unit that's got a little bit heavier of a rear axle weight rating, a little bit heavier of a gross combined weight rating for design so that the brake system is a little heavier. Um that said, I'm still not a huge fan of electric or even electric over hydraulic brakes on right. trailers, but they do work. They just involve a whole lot more maintenance than an air brake system. Uh, and luckily, there are no mountains in the background. So, yes. So I think we covered it, but it sure is interesting. And keep them coming. So if if you see trailer pictures out there that you have a question, uh, this is not a you know we're not 
all laughing and slapping each other on the back. This is a serious conversation about what makes, you know, what makes auto transport work. Is there an insurance, you know, is there an insurance agent out there sweating like crazy right now? We just want to cover these things and make sure that uh, that's the whole point. So thank you oh, guys yeah, so I, much for jumping. I'm, I'm not here to bash anybody. There yeah. is no such thing as a stupid question. And we all have to learn somewhere. We, we really do. I did some stuff early on in my career that I would scratch my head and say, why, now that I know better? <laughs> right. And it's just, that's what we're here for is education. We're here to discuss these things. And maybe I'm looking at it wrong. Maybe somebody can explain to me what I'm not seeing in this picture. Or, or maybe maybe while he's you know finishing up there, he's thinking, I wish I had a semi. Mm, could very well be. Could be. This might be the best he can do right now. Yeah, uh, exactly. A lot of people get into the pickup truck and small trailer market because they can finance that privately, just like it is a personal owned vehicle. Whereas getting a line of credit on a class seven or eight semi is much more difficult. So right. it it's the lower entry point to allow you to live your dream and get started in the industry. Um, so I shared this last night. Um, I don't, you know, there's a lot of tragedy stories out there and I, I don't share them all because I don't know. I just don't. Um, but this one, Candy sent me this and I read the story, tow truck driver. Uh, I guess it was, a, it was a fat, le it said left lane. So I'm guessing fast lane. I don't know what kind of road it was. But he stopped to help a driver that was stopped in the left lane. And as he was there helping out, a 20-something SUV driver slammed into them and killed them both. Yeah, this is sad. And this is something that is near and dear to my heart. Because as the regular viewers and listeners know, I also work in the towing industry. And I came from the towing industry as a third generation towing operator and towing business owner. Uh, and this right here, um, Carlos was number 17 in the towing industry alone, struck and killed on the side of the road uh, in 2021 the towing industry loses on average a operator once every six days is struck and killed and on average among all highway responders and highway workers so this includes your construction workers your police your fire your ambulance operators we have two struck by incidents a day and we have one person killed every i believe it's three and a half or four days it's tragic. It's increasing. The numbers are increasing. Just a couple of years ago, we only lost six or seven tow truck drivers a year. And now the numbers are increasing. And it's because of the distracted drivers. We have the drunk, the drugged and the drowsy that we all think about. And that's a big problem. But distraction with your cell phones in vehicle entertainments, that is a huge issue right now. And so, yeah, it's tragic that this driver lost his life and, and something completely preventable from a, just a distracted driver. Yeah. And, and what you say distracted, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Could have been distracted. I hate the way people drive anyways. I don't think that they're courteous enough. Yada, 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 Jay, we hear you. But I think really ultimately given all the autonomous vehicle, uh, work and i'm not going to say progress because it seems like we take two steps backward every time they try to hook up the lidar or whatever and in while it's fun and games to make fun of it i think we're slowly giving away our, our our freedom to drive because we keep killing people and not driving reasonable i i don't know i'll still look at it yeah that that's a big driving factor in this technology being developed and being authorized by lawmakers is they feel and i'm still out on whether i believe it's going to make a difference or not because look at how many self-driving teslas have sh slammed into parked emergency vehicles on the highway uh but that is part of why we have 
lane departure warning and automatic braking. And in the highway bill, which is uh, we're likely going to see the text of it either this Friday or next Friday, finally, in the highway bill, they're pushing for mandatory speed limiters again and the insurance increase. And the way we'll get around speed limiters on commercial vehicles is adopting lane departure and automatic emergency braking and other uh, so-called safety technologies, which, again, if it prevents even one tragedy like loss of this young man's life then we have to seriously consider it but that said i really do think we need to just improve the quality of motor vehicle operator we have in the united states and i I, and i it the way people drive chips away at my hope for humanity it really it's really yes and i'm not even talking about speeding you know speeding is one thing but the weaving in and out and when you put your blinker on you become a target of like road rage i mean it's just Mm -hmm. it's insane I can't get over it. There's no point in talking about it. We're just going to... The cars are going to have to take over. People just do not drive reasonable. And I, there you go. I don't know I don't know how else to... It, it, I hate this issue. That's why I don't talk about it. Yeah, same here. I, I really, really dislike this issue. Yeah. Because it's all preventable. <laughs> right. Just don't drive like a maniac. But who... Yeah. who yeah, okay. All right, okay. So speaking of, here we go. Good times. Self-driving truck got a shipment cross-country 10 hours faster than a human driver. All right. Perfect timing for this article. Plus, oh, and you know what? Oh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to come back to that. Oh, joy. Um, We do need to go into the live chat. Um, I forgot to do this. Okay, two bears transportation. Here's one for you, Brian. Uh, let's see here. Let's just go to that. Do that. Okay, two bears transportation. David's like, I thought you forgot about me. Right? I didn't forget about you, David. All right. And we're going to read live chat. And then we're going to get into uh, human driving robot fun. Okay, here we go. (laughs) Howdy, all. So if you have an IRP account, if you have a local pickup three-car setup, does it have to be included in for mileage and fuel? And what about mileage for your biannual mileage reporting? If your pickup truck is displaying the apportioned plate that is part of your IRP fleet, then yes. If your local pickup, and I don't mean pickup like pickup truck, your local P&D truck uh, is displaying only a state base plate, not an apportioned plate, and you're in a state that does not require you to display a fuel decal if you're operating in that state, then no. Uh, And that's why IRP allows you also to set up multiple fleets under the same account. So you could group your poor performing long haul trucks to get five and six miles per gallon in one fleet. And you can group your high performing 15, 18 mile per gallon, uh, little tow trucks or little car carriers, one car units, pickup trucks, etc. into another fleet. That way you can report fuel consumed and mileage more accurately and you're not losing mileage on the one truck, gaining mileage on the other. It becomes a game of numbers. But the short answer is no, not every vehicle you operate has to be in the same IRP fleet, fleet or even reported it's going to depend on how that truck is registered and where its license plate comes from. If it is an IRP plate from that fleet, then yes, even the in-state and in-town mileage and subsequent fuel purchases must be accounted for. Thank you so much, Brian. Appreciate that. Um, and I'm just checking my audio. Mic check. One, two, check, check, check. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next oh, that's a little bit loud. Let's go to the next one. We've got Victory Lap Transport. That's Devin. Uh, good afternoon, Brian and Jay. Quick question. Does DOT operate during normally, normal hours on Saturdays and Sundays? Good question. Um, if you mean roadside inspections and enforcement, yes. Their call centers, their regional service centers, no, they run Monday to Friday bankers hours. But DOT for motor carrier enforcement is 24-7, 365. Some states it doesn't seem like that because you never see them after dark and on a rainy day. But trust me, they have officers available 24-7, 365. That is a good question. Because I would think that 
you know, one would think that they're not on the weekends, but they are. Oh, yes, so. especially states like New York. New York had DOT enforcement officers out on the Memorial Day weekend, on Memorial Day, on Sunday, on Saturday. New York is known for you to be running across 17 or 86, and you'll find them at 1 o'clock in the morning, 100 miles from civilization, just sitting there waiting for you. Uh, so yes, some states do run 24-7. Uh, some states, they tend to have more predictable hours. I think the DOT was at the boat parade. Um, <laughs> Chris says, hey, everyone, hope all is well. Thank you, Chris. Ty is with us. What's going on, Ty? Carlos Braxton, ACB Logistics. What's happening, Carlos? And Chris says, this is the information station. Jay, this channel and your guests like Brian and Ty, along with people you bring in from the industry, is amazing. Thank you, Chris. Uh, last night's show was another great panel discussion with the Black Widow vehicle imaging show that was an amazing show so if you if you missed it please do check it out chris also says last night my boss rolled out the carmax purchase of edmonds thanks to ati i already knew that that is awesome um and that is one of the things that we try to do here ty and i we talk every so often and i i you know i feel bad uh for folks that regularly miss all this information because i know one of the reasons i do it and i i try to to run through the news quickly is that i know not everybody has time you got to take time out of your regular schedule to get news sometimes now we all get the i don't know whatever's going on in iran or the hostages or the war we get that news and the masks and stuff but when it comes to important business news, you usually have to take time out of your schedule to seek it out. So I try to bring that. And, you know, for folks that are missing it, man, it's a bummer. But, you know, thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Bro, this look like, looks like my lot daily. Oh, he's talking about the, the six car. And uh, <laughs> uh, Ty asked his pants because of the six car. So that's good, too. Um, <laughs> all right. Florida DOT always working, except if there's a hurricane. And even then, <laughs> it's ponchos on, everybody. Okay, mm -hmm. um, I think it's time to go back to um, this happy good time news story. Here we go. Uh, yeah. A self-driving truck got a shipment cross-country 10 hours faster than a human driver. Now, the headline alone, right... Can just you know that's enough to and there was a couple there was a couple quotes in there that were like and the fruit was better when it got there okay so right it was it was water it was a shipment of watermelons and it got there 10 hours faster because the truck doesn't sleep yeah but this is nothing that could not have been accomplished with a team driver operation which is very common in perishable products uh and the only reason the truck could get there 10 hours faster is this company has a limited exception from hours of service for its safety driver which is the poor human monkey sitting behind the wheel monitoring the computer who probably was tired and fatigued by the time his shift was up and that truck drove the thousand miles relatively uh without or relatively yeah wow i cannot speak today take 400 <laughs> take uh, uh with without uh regular rest breaks um and what scares me about this is it similar to autopilot with the airplanes with the highly high level of automation in the industry how tempted is that safety driver who is there to monitor the system doesn't fail right now? How tempted is he to get up and stretch his legs, go in the bunk, use the bottle, uh, uh, make himself a sandwich, oh. something like that? Because how do you put your human that's in that truck to monitor it in that condition where the truck doesn't stop for a thousand miles unless, again, they have a pair of human safety drivers in there to monitor it? And then it's not news because... They could have done the same thing if the two guys were just allowed to drive the truck themselves anyhow. No, seriously, to be the safety human sounds terrible. Yes. Yes. And that now there's another one of these self-driving companies that has permission to begin a 100-mile stretch in Arizona this uh, summer 
with no human on board the truck at all. It's going to be remotely monitored right. like they do drone pilots. And, and that's kind of scary, too. Well, and so this company, Too Simple, is one of several companies that is not going to stop working on this. Nobody's stopping. No. Uh, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. No, and, um, and I'm I'm not completely opposed to this concept of self-driving trucks. Uh, we just need to stop rushing the technology and and rushing the system. Um, eventually, it's going to happen. Uh, right. I was at a grocery store the other day that has a uh, autonomous robot that scans with cameras looking for slip, trip, and fall hazards, and they have found that it has. Uh, reduced by almost 30 percent their customers that are injured and the resulting claims and payout just by having this robot wa wander up and down the aisles with cameras looking for slip trips and falls wow. automation and technology has a place the guys that should be scared for this are the guys that do your line haul work they go just from warehouse to warehouse because that computer can be programmed to hook up to the set of double trailers that's made by the yard hostler and pull out of the gate and make the left-hand turn to get on the interstate and drive right into the next terminal. That's the type of work that this is uh, suited for, that it is going to replace maybe before. Like a, so, like, maybe, like, uh, packaging or postal from, you know, just day in, day out, right? Maybe. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I want to say this, because I don't want to forget to say this, is that in auto transport, here's what I was thinking. If you've got, because I don't think that the cars are going to load themselves. I think that's a red herring. The driver's going to load and unload. But, mm. for now, for now, let's, let's take baby steps. Okay, so for now, the driver loads and unloads. But once that nine car's loaded, why can't the truck drive itself, and I'm, this isn't me coming up with this idea. I'm sure it's already out there. Why can't the truck, the loaded truck, drive itself from Phoenix to Dallas while the driver sleeps? He's been busy all day long. Well, there's no reason it can't. And why do we even need the driver to accompany the truck? The union already has loaders that will preload the truck for certain accounts. Oh, and and the driver like, no. just gets in it and drives. Mm. Uh, and don't, mm. don't. Don't bet your money on the truck not loading itself. Uh, I was part in 2015. I was part of some field testing with a major OEM where we had a car without even a steering wheel in it. And we had an app there in case it went wrong and special sensors to load, take them off the rail car and load them onto different transport trucks. And they would drive themselves off the rail car. Someone just had to go in and release the wheel chalk in the rail car and drive themselves onto the carrier and place themselves right on mark. And someone just had to put the straps over the wheels. <laughs> and there's been experimentation even with automating the car wow. carrier so that the decks go up and down by themselves as the car approaches it. Um, Lore, which is a leading worldwide manufacturer of auto transport equipment, just release to the public their free app to help you design the load for your truck you input the vin numbers of the no. vehicles you are hauling what? and it tells you how to place them on your truck for maximum uh use of the available deck space weight distribution etc and complying with all the oem requirements for this one can only be nosed on this one can only be backed on that has to be upper deck that can't be lower deck blah 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 Okay, I have not, whoa, Brian, I have not heard about this Lore app. And I, one of the things that I like to talk about is that one day somebody will create the technology that will tell someone how to load a truck based on what they've got. Because that I technology know, already rudimentally ex, rudimentary well, exists. not exactly. Not that I know of. And there were companies that have tried this. Uh, what was it? Auto logist. I don't remember the name. Anyways, if they, if auto logistics it, tried it, yes. Yeah. DHL plans on trying it with their exactly. management of Mannheim trying. plans on. So if lore has it, I want to see it. Do you know somebody at lore? I do not because we sell a competing brand Alex of car hauler, but I will send, I will send yeah. you the press release on it that I received that. yesterday, later tonight. Send it to me. Yes. I want to see that. And that goes for you out there in TV land. If you see something 
that we're ready to talk about. Because Auto Transport Intel is the only car shipping business channel. Right now, and I mean, we, we're seeing this. We're now the lead dog in car shipping business information every week. And so, and the audience is growing. So if you've got something that you think should be shared, I want to see it. I want to hear it. And I want to share it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You got your marching orders. It is 1230 already. This show flies by, it my flies friend. flies by. Um, did everybody get everything they needed to get out of the live chat? Clean out your lockers. Uh, what is going to happen when a tire... Here we go. Two bears. Brian, what's going to happen when a tire goes flat or a breakdown? People can just help themselves to the load when it sits on the road. By the way, that's interesting, Two Bears, because you know another reason why these autonomous trucks? Because then you don't have to sit at a truck stop and get robbed in the middle of the night. I think so. Yes. Right? Insurance companies will love that. Yes, and that's a great point, David. There, And there is some risk to that. The theory is, at least that the autonomous truck is going to monitor its tire pressure and it's not going to be the human that says I can limp at the next hundred miles up the road because I want to stop at this brand of truck stop. An autonomous vehicle doesn't care about what brand of truck stop it stops at for refueling. So a lot of the routine breakdowns are going to stop. We're facing this in the towing industry. I just wrote about this a couple months ago for the towing industry where we're noticing that highly automated vehicles they break down, but not nearly as much as their fully manual counterparts because they self-diagnose and they just won't let the vehicle leave on the trip if it sees something is wrong. So imagine your truck is going to constantly be monitoring its tire and tire pressure and wheel bearings and everything else. And as soon as it sees a potential fault, it's going to route itself to the nearest service center before the breakdown happens on the road. So I'm not saying that they won't break down. Uh, I do imagine that because these vehicles are, at least for our lifetime, still going to have some form of human monitoring at a call center. The instant they know that truck is broke down, they'll be using the cameras around it to watch for security, maybe even dispatch uh, road service or dispatch local law enforcement to go make sure it's safely off the road. I'm sure that they have some contingencies, but that's a great question and some great thought to think about. What happens? But well, what happens if your truck breaks down with a flat tire or breaks down with a part and you have to get an Uber in the town to get the part because you're going to fix it yourself? It's still sitting there as a lone duck on the side of the highway. Well, that's, that's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> exactly. And the thing with the autonomous truck, now you don't have somebody, I don't know, wasting time or nowhere to eat or go to the bathroom or whatever. Again, it's I'm not. I'm, I want, I'm, for the record, I'm not in love with the world being automated robots. Neither am I. <laughs> but I can see that nobody will stop working on it and all the human problems we continue to proliferate. And while I look at those, you see, you ever look at pictures of like uh, warehouses and all the robots going everywhere? Mm -hmm. It is freaky. And well, yet, McLean food. I can imagine if I owned that warehouse, I'm, I'm just counting stacks of money well exactly i was just going to say mclean food service has two seven. fully automated warehouses in their system that replaced what would typically be three to four hundred warehouse workers with six people to maintain the robots and supervise and they found that these robots pick the product build the pallet shrink wrap the pallet load the pallet in the trailer their selection accuracy has been near 100 percent and their damage has dropped off more than 50% for in-transit product damage because humans improperly built the pallet. The robot builds it exactly as instructed every time. And so now their truck drivers, when they get in the field to deliver to the local grocery store or the convenience store or restaurant, the product's exactly where it's supposed to be on the trailer, and it's exactly the right product. And so there is a call for automation. And since people don't want to do manual labor anymore, automation is going to replace a lot of those jobs, uh, which causes a problem for those of us that still enjoy it, or that is the skill set we have. Uh, I don't think automation is going to take our jobs in our lifetime, but my grandchildren will have a vastly different transportation network to uh, work in. And then I wonder what everybody's going to do. And I think of the movie Wally, -E, where everyone's just sitting around on a cruise ship in space drinking you know large soda um, and I, I, way, I think you... a maximum overdrive where the <laughs> trucks go nuts oh, <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> that is, I think that's probably what mo more people think of. I go to Wally, and everyone else goes to Maximum Overdrive. Um, <laughs> but and did you see that? Here's another just tidbit: China just changed its child policy. It's been a one-child policy for as long as I can remember. Now mm -hmm. there are three. Wow, that that's huge over there. That, that's like a really big deal. So. Are we going to go to a... Anyways. All right. I've said enough. This has gotten crazy. This is not Soylent Green. And uh, have you seen that one? That's a crazy movie. Go mm -hmm. watch Soylent Green. Um, and it's. I want to say have a great weekend, but it's only Wednesday. It's noon. Shoot. It's, it's barely hump day. Uh-huh. So we'll have to come up with a... Enjoy the rest of your week. Maybe that's what we say. Sure. Don't take any wooden nickels. Sure. <laughs> Take five. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, everybody in the live chat, thank you guys so much for joining us. Yes, Chris says maximum overdrive. See, nobody sides with me ever. <laughs> You're not one. off on Wally. You're really not. <laughs> right. I, I know Wally, man. I, I, I just think of all the heads in a jar on Futurama, the cartoon, instead, Ooh, where you yeah. don't need a body anymore. Right. Futurama, dude. Or, 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 uh, or Captain Pike when he was rebuilt in the Star Trek pilot and there really was no need for a human body anymore Whoa. because the machines do everything. Whoa, dude. I know. It's a crazy subject. It's going to keep going. So, uh, all right. Enjoy the rest of your hump day. Have a great week. Thanks for joining us. Take care, everybody. See ya. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>